Boom. All right, all right, all right. My camera's about to fall over already. Clearly, I'm not doing something right. Or that's nothing new, right? All right, you ready to go, Bob? Uh, if you are. I, I think we're we're about 11:05, which is the the waiting period that I like to give people to uh to join because if they're like me, they're running late and getting a a thing on their phone that says you have a meeting that you signed up for and you you jet into the into the shop. So. Um, what we're going to do is I am going to share the screen, share the PowerPoint. Um, Bob, you're going to, I'm going to let you drive. So if you want to uh, um, take us through, I'm going to turn off my camera and mute my mic so that I don't interfere with the whole process while we get this going. Okay. All right. And uh, you're going to control the slides for us. And, yep. Uh... yep. I'm, we're controlling the slides. So whenever you um, uh, want to tell us to advance, then we will, uh, we will, we will get it advanced for you. Awesome. Okay. All right, so I'm fixed to turn off my camera and turn off my mic. All right, sounds good. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to review all the equipment that uh, that Kristen has at Collision Hub as far as select equipment goes. And, uh, and also, we're going to talk about some other things that we have some slides for. So can, uh, can we go ahead and, uh, and forward on to the, the first slide, please? So Sillette uh, started in 1953. Sillette was the first universal frame machine um, globally. A lot of people don't realize that, but uh, the original factory is still standing and we're still producing product out of that factory in beyond France. Okay, can we, can we go to the next slide, please? So we're going to review uh, a lot of things today, and a lot of them uh, people don't know that Sled actually manufactures uh, heavy-duty truck systems and uh, universal jig systems, drive-on benches, and measuring systems. A lot of people know Sled just because of the the hard-hit cars that need to go on dedicated jigs. And years ago, that that was our primary business, but uh, now with new innovation. Uh, drive-on frame machines, drive-on benches, electronic measuring, and universal fixtures, we're able to go after the whole market now where it's not just the high-end European vehicles. Can we forward, please? So, Select is the world leader in OEM approvals. Um, over the last couple of years, we've added quite a few. Uh, being Toyota, Ford, General Motors. Uh, we just did a study with Chevy on the new CA Corvette with the Universal Jigs, the Chameleon set. Um, all the Japanese cars, Toyota, we actually joined Toyota's uh, equipment program this year. Ford Rotunda, we joined their program this year. Honda, um, Nissan. So there's, there's quite a few uh, programs that we're on. And a lot of them have to do with the new universal jig system. So everybody knows Select because of the universal mobile benches. So we've got two mobile benches, one being the 7E, and that's the original mobile bench, um, 14 and a half foot long. But we also have the XL bench. So you're able to do all the bigger vehicles uh, sprinter vans, things like that. And um, maybe we could pan over to one of our mobile benches at the, at the shop there. We will do that, Kristen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're getting it right there. So, yep. Going to the yeah. server. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the things that you're trying to drive multiple videos and audio at the same time. So yeah, we've got just the regular Sabine. We had the XL in here um, and I don't see me doing any sprinter vans anytime soon. So <laughs> we were able to kind of size down a little bit and make something that fit the shop a little bit better for us. Um, and then, yeah, it's worked out great. Do we have any, anybody got any questions? On, I, I kind of want to stop as we go. If any questions come up or anybody wants to raise their hand and ask anything, man, I'll, I'll answer anything. Probably incorrectly, but I'll answer anything. So. I'll help you out. <laughs> uh, to, to Kristen's uh, 
to her left side, we also have the Griffin drive on bench there as well. Um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about that one here in a minute when you get there. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be. Slides on that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be awesome. So. Cool. Um, all right, so are you ready to go back to the presentation? Yeah, we could, we could go back to the All right, so we're going to go back to that presentation. Oh, for sure. No problem. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, so on our mobile benches, the the main way that we load a car on those benches is a is a two post lift. As you see, this vehicle is being lowered down onto some jigs, which we'll talk more about in a little while. And then we're able to move that bench to anywhere in in the shop to whatever work stall we want to, or even inside a spray booth if we have to bake some adhesive. So there is a place for the mobile benches, but we're gonna we're gonna look at the whole range today, and we'll see that we've we've got some drive-on options as well. Next slide, please. So on this slide, we've we've got a video attached to it, and uh, <clears throat> if we could hit that video, what we have here is we've got the XL bench, we've got dedicated jigs, and normally what we'll do is we'll pick four points and we'll lower the car down onto those four jigs. And then after the car is on those four jigs, we'll raise the rest of the jigs up that we have in place and pin those. It's just so much easier to work with four points as you're lowering the car down onto the jigs than six, eight, or 10 jigs at one time. As you can see, we're using the two post lift for this operation and the, the bench being on wheels, we're able to move it front to back or left to right to line up those jigs as the car is coming down to make the make the alignment with the, the actual fixture. Any questions on uh, on dedicated jigs? Okay, we could forward to the next slide, Kristen. So now we'll take a we'll take a look at the Griffin bench, and this is our our signature bench. There's no other bench on the market like it. It has an internal lift, which makes it a Griffin. Um, that internal lift allows us to drive the vehicle onto the frame machine, and then pick the vehicle up, and that lift rolls forward and backward along the length of the machine as well as left to right. This allows us to place the car in sill clamps or on the actual jig itself. Um, unique thing about this, these benches are you can use them with or without fixtures. We can put our electronic measuring system on um, and use it just as a pulling platform with a 3D measuring system. So there's many options available and, uh, and we'll look at more of those. So um, <clears throat> it's got uh, over 6,000 pounds lift capacity. And this allows us to do even the biggest unibodies, say like a, a car that weighs in like the Dodge Charger or even all the way up to a Chevy Suburban. We're able to, to pick these vehicles up with this lift. Next slide, please. So um, if we start at, at the top left and we look, like I said, we've got over 6,000 pound capacity lifting. We've got different puller options. Um, the regular dozer type puller, which we call our 7E puller. The next one over is a, a vector pull kit, which we've got two different choices for that. The one shown in this circle here is what we call our Viper. It uses our four ton uh, porta power set. And then we've also got a, a 10 ton attachment to make a, a vector pull as well. We'll look at the, the full frame clamps a little bit later in another slide more closely. But we're able to do full frame vehicles on this. Like I said, we could do a Suburban or a Tahoe with the full frame setup. And then to the right of that is our electronic measuring system, 3D Naja, which is the most accurate measuring system on the market today. Then we go over to our jig systems. We've got two different types of jig systems. For years, everybody knew Select because of the dedicated jig. And uh, when a car couldn't be fixed because it, it was just hit too hard, everybody went to Select's dedicated jig. 
But today we've launched the Chameleon and the Chameleon allows us to do any car in the shop with jigs anchored down to the, to the machine and use it as a holding device and a measuring device. And we're able to use this one set of jigs for every car on the market today. Any questions so far? Okay, next slide. So this, this, uh, this has a video attached to it as well. And we're gonna, we're gonna back a Toyota on this frame machine and this is the Griffin. You can see the internal lift as well as the X lift underneath. And as we back this on, I'm gonna ask you to pause it if we could at a certain point, just to take a closer look at the lift right there. If we could pause it, back it up a little bit. So that's, that's fine there, Kristen. If we look, <clears throat> we see we've got the cross members in place. We've also, we could see the lift and that's a gray box in the center with the yellow corners on it. Our sill clamps are also still on the machine. So everything is still in place. So it makes it very quick once we get the car on, on the frame machine to actually start working. Okay, we can continue with the video. So as we raise it up, you'll see the lift plates lift up on the ramps for safety so the vehicle can't roll off the frame machine as we're working on it. And full height on that, uh, that lift is uh, four and a half feet. So it puts, puts the rocker panels of the vehicle right up at, uh, at eye level, very easy working height. Hey, Bob, I'm just going to jump in here real quick, and, sure. and this is for I think for a lot of people. I uh, how do I say? Okay, so that terrified me for years and years and years. The whole system absolutely terrified me, and even though you know, like Larry and everybody's trying to help me get comfortable with it, the you know, Savine and the two post lift and the loading a car still was overwhelming for me. And so the Griffin really changed the story. And, and I always like to tell people it's, it's a Savine just with a lift in a way, <laughs> but, but it makes it feel very comfortable for me. So, I mean, that was, I, I absolutely love this thing. Um, it, it's in my comfort zone. Um, but, but yeah, I was, I, I'm, I, that's what I wanted to say about it. Cause it, you know, old stuff scared me, but now it's kind of cool. And I thought the pop-up plates were just for cool looks, Bob. I didn't know they were for safety. That's kind of cool. Well, safety is cool. <laughs> um, it, that's a good point, though, that it, it is a 7E bench. Um, all our benches start as 7E benches, and then we modify them or, or we make uh, lifts, you know, that go underneath the bench or in the center of the bench. So if we just put an X lift underneath a regular 7E, then we call it a roan. And... If we put an inner lift in at that point, then we call it a Griffin. So they all do start as the same machine. Um, you know, if you have a 7E or a 7E XL, you can make it a Griffin in most cases. Um, some of the older ones you can't do it to, but but we do have the kits that we can upgrade your mobile bench to make it a make it a drive on Griffin or Rome. Okay, we can go to the next slide. And this one also has a video and we're gonna take a closer look, look at that inner Griffin lift now. This is, the, this is the main lift, the X lift on the bottom of the machine showing, showing it lowering down into position. And now we're taking off the runway decking and it's lightweight runway decking. So it's very easy to handle for the technician. And if you look, you see our sill clamps are still in place. Uh, they're, they're ready to be mounted to the vehicle. So we don't have to go to the wall and take anything off or roll a cart up to work with. Everything is in place at this point. 
and it's very quick and manageable. So if you look at the ends of those lifts, uh, corner of the lift, you'll see those yellow plates and that's where we're gonna lock these arms onto. And these arms are a well, they're, they're hanging on the side of the frame machine. So it's very quick, everything's in one place and it's, it's local. Now the rubber blocks here, we can see we have two different heights and Dirk is actually spinning it to go put it into a lower position now. And this, this video is in real time, so you can see how fast everything comes together to assemble the lift and get the car up off the machine. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So this, this slide just gives us a quick review of what we talked about with the Griffin. It is a tilt bench. Uh, the yellow silk lamp bases are a unique design that allow us to have the, the actual pinch well clamp slid out to the side. It's out of the way of the car driving on also out of the way of the door opening so you could exit the vehicle once you are on the frame machine. Uh, drive on, ride, raise the bench up, raise the Griffin lift, bring the car up off the deck, and then you're able to slide in your silk clamps like we see down on the right hand corner. So this is a this is one of Kristen's favorite hey, machines. Right hey Bob, real quick, I wanted to show something before we go on to the extract. Um, sure. I'm gonna pull my video back up here um, okay. because I, I think that, yeah, so one of the things that's um, um, that's real cool with this system that was was great when I got it and I don't want to let this pass is that it is the lightest decking I've seen in the industry at all. Now <laughs> I, I think I always like to tell people and joke that one of the heaviest things I like to lift is a drink. That's, you know, just, just the way I am. But this decking, I can lift it with two fingers. I mean, so for me, it's nothing. It, it's, you know, I can drive a car on it, but it doesn't take anything for me to take it off. And I have not found any decking on the market that is this light. I've had other decking where I've had to like kind of take it off the rack with my hip and kind of carry it this way over and hope um, I didn't hurt anything. But I, I am constantly just impressed with how light and easy this stuff is to throw around and i'm a big old weenie these days so that says a lot so i'm sorry go back i wanted to show that yeah that, that's a great point and um the other thing is it's it's only probably uh, maybe an inch and a quarter thick so it's it stacks up nicely um once you take it off the machine and it's proven um we've been using that decking for Man, I, I know of that decking being on the Griffin for 20 years, so it's, it's a proven product. It's done very well for us. So this is the, the extract. It's what we call a platform um, machine, and there's a ton of ways that you can set this machine up. Um, if, if you're looking for a machine that you can, can just drive over, lift a car up, and, and do a quick hookup, and still have 10 tons of pulling, uh, this is a machine that you should look at and spend a little bit of time on our website and look at all the options and, and the way that you can set these up. Um, it, it has full decking that can go on it so you can make it a complete drive over machine. Um, all the new ones, which we'll, we'll look at on the next slide, all the new ones coming into the US are what we call double entry. So both ends are around it. So it gives us a true 360 pulling platform. Um, the other thing is you, you can see the smaller picture there. Uh, you can roll your 7E over top of it and use it to lift up your 7E and, and work on the car up in the air. It's got a nice lifting height, 55 inches. So when it's fully raised, it's, it's up over your shoulders. Um, and uh, it's, it's got a massive lifting capacity of almost 9,000 pounds. Very low, uh, very low clearance, so the lowest cars can go on it, uh, 4.3 inches off the, off the floor. And like I said, it's, it's a 10-ton pull machine. 
So it's, it's done very well for us. We've got shops that are putting three and four of these in at a time. Well, 42 participants. Yeah. So for, uh, for me, um, um, the way I'm using it, just for people that are curious, and you'll see in the estimating show, which is our next webinar for today, um, for me, it's my blueprinting rack. Um, and it, I guess it would also make a good quick repair. But what I like about this quick lift over some other things in the market is it is open. You can see from the picture. Um, so some other lifts I've had once I drive over, um, it's there's solid plate. And so I can't get access sometimes to some things I want. It, it prevents me from, from doing it's not every time that you have a car on the lift, you need to get under it to do something. But when you do, it sure is great to have that capacity to see through, to get up and touch things. It's, it's uh, been a workhorse and I haven't, I haven't broke it yet. So yay. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for the comments, Kristen. Uh, we can take a look at the next slide. And uh, up top there, you see that's what we call the double entry. So that's that's how all the extracts are delivered in the United States now. Uh, it's, it's a little bit longer, a few inches longer, but the nice thing is it gives us a complete 360 pull platform. And if you do want to use it uh, to raise your 7E bench, um, those yellow brackets that are right in the center of the screen there, those, those are the only adapters that you need to do that. So it's very efficient. Um, if you don't have a drive on, you have a mobile bench to uh, to help your tech out and, and give them a raised platform. Works out well. Next slide, we'll take a look at uh, all the accessories or some of the accessories that come with it. Like I said, it's a uh, it's 10 ton pull tower and the lift capacity is almost 9,000 pounds. We did look at the yellow brackets on the last slide. Lift height is maximum height is 55 inches with a low clearance of 4.3 inches off the floor. Uh, two circles up to the right hand side there. Um, that's a kit with higher sill clamps and wheel stands that you're able to actually use our 3D electronic measuring system on this platform. Um, and we'll, we'll look at the, the nausea in a little bit on the upcoming slides. Any questions on this? Extract platform. Okay, we'll take a look at the next slide, and that's how we drive the vehicle on. Then he had a bucket. He was so the the wheel plates they actually slide the length of the machine. So if you look at the top right picture, you'll see the green arrows indicating that you can move those uh, the length of the, the length of the the uh, platform. And the reason for that is for different wheelbase cars. So the, the fast, easy way to, to prep this machine before you drive a vehicle on it is just take a quick measure of the, the wheelbase. It doesn't have to be exact as long as it's close. Um, where the front wheels will sit, they'll sit in a pocket. And then where the back wheels will sit, they'll sit on a flat deck. And that's the reason that you don't have to have the exact wheel measurement, just something that's pretty close. <clears throat> Then we'll, we'll slide those um, wheel baskets into place, back the vehicle up onto the frame machine, and then you can raise it up and actually start to work on it. Now, you never have to raise the car off the machine. The silk clamps will just drop right onto the side of the machine, uh, lock in with a, with a quick wedge, and you're able to slide the clamps in and bolt them right up to the rocker panels, uh, pinch well clamps. So it's very quick, easy to use system. Now, the, <clears throat> the way it's set up is the front wheels, you're able to actually unload the suspension. Um, now, if we had to unload the rear suspension, we would just drive the car on versus backing it on. But you're able to actually take the wheels off if you need to, and you're able to put them back on and drive the car back off the bench. So it's pretty unique set up and there's a there's a pretty good video if you youtube um x1 so x dash o n e which is the original configuration of the x track from years ago there's there's a really good video on all the things that you can do as far as um, side pulls unload the suspension quickly tie down the car for uh, for a pull so there's there's a lot you can do with this machine, and um, 
a lot of accessories available for it. Next slide. So this is a, this is a brand new machine for us. It's a, it's a Roan XL. So it's just about 20 feet long. Um, massive list, lifting capacity. You can see the size of the lifts. Um, four piston system. It'll it'll allow us to do our F250s, F350 dualies. Um, full full drive on like we've seen with the Griffin. Um, 10 ton pull, you can do fixtures, you can do uh, chameleon, you can do nausea. So it's very versatile machine. And um, and again, it's got the lightweight decking. Um, so this, this you'll see um, at the upcoming shows, I'm sure. This, this is a brand new system for us and we think it'll do very good in the US market for trucks. So this is just an example of what we did um, with dedicated jigs for Ford when they when they switched to the aluminum body. Uh, we entered a program with Ford to build the jigs for the full frame as well as for the body of the truck. So we could jig up the um, the frame and the body at the same time, or just the frame or just the body. This is just another example of how we're working more closely with the US car manufacturers. And we'll talk more about uh, full frames and anchoring when we get to that slide for the Tetric system. So this is our full frame anchoring. Uh, it allows you to put any truck on any one of our 7E, Griffin, Roan, uh, bench frame machines. Um, can also adapt it to use it with the universal jigs as well. So it's a, it's a very strong um, truck anchoring system that can be used with, it, with any of our systems, whether it be dedicated or universal jigging systems. And now we'll take a look at the uh, electronic measuring system. So this is a single point measuring, very accurate to uh, to seven tenths of a millimeter. So it's the most accurate measuring device in the market today. It's also the only measuring device that comes with a, a testing measurement um, device that you can actually test the accuracy of the measurements before you actually measure a car. No other system provides this for you. So it's a, a self calibration checkpoint that you can actually do it in, in in your shop yourself. Each technician will be trained on how to do that when the system is set up in your building. Uh, it allows us to measure, like I said, on any of our benches, two post lifts, even, even a car sitting on floor, on a jack stands on the floor or wheel stands on the floor. <laughs> any comments, Kristen? I know, I know you've been playing with your nausea. Here I come, here I come. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so I'm, I'm trying to learn it. I haven't had a lot to measure lately since, so you know, wait, first of the year when you go to January, it's like you're traveling all over the industry with the first run and then, you know, you get to come back. But I haven't had a lot to measure. So we've been testing it in the shop, um, working great for me. One of the cool things that I think was was um, neat is we had all of every, well, I would say, all of the staff here trained on it. So Greg worked with our operations director who, was an Allstate adjuster, so I mean, come on, if an Allstate adjuster can figure out how to, no, I'm just kidding, but, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, we, <laughs> um, so Greg was able to teach, you know, Holly how to do it in about half a day, and uh, we've been measuring stuff here, and my kids have learned it, so I've got an 11-year-old and a 15-year-old now that have learned the system, so um, it's accurate, it's fast, um, I, I have a, we've discussed, I don't know, I don't want to pan over there, because y'all would laugh at how dirty that side of the shop is right now, but, um, um, getting the gazelle, I'm going to lower my gazelle a little bit, but man, I can whip it around and measure just about anything. I've got it down to, I'm, I'm uh, Holly's going to nod at me and tell me whether I'm wrong. We've got it down to about, what, 20, 30 minutes, full, complete, front to rear, you know, all the measurements we need. Yeah. We, I mean, I like it. So I got to get better at upper body. So next time you come here and work with me, know that that's the training. Greg said he was not coming back to train me, that it was all up to you now, Bob. 
<laughs> so. <laughs> no, I love coming back down there. Oh, okay. You see, all right. I mean, I know it was frustrating. Tell me the truth. Was it easier to teach the uh, the old retired Allstate adjuster or the? Or hey, you know, I think Holly did great. I think she did great. Dang. Seriously, I mean, you know, for doing it, doing it over the phone. I mean, hey. Yeah, and we're talking we're talking about someone that that was not ever in the shop, right? So yeah. So we took that skill set trained over the phone remotely in just a couple hours and we had her up and running and measuring vehicles so when you think about do you want to put the system in blueprint it's definitely an option and definitely a, a ease of well, is ease ease isn't right it's a very short learning curve so and it is super accurate and I, the database is pretty fantastic i haven't pulled up anything yet we haven't had and i've gone all the way back to like some 1995s we were measuring some 95 wranglers the other day so extensive database straight oe data it's amazing yeah, that's a good point, Kristen. Uh, you know, we have one of the biggest databases globally. And um, also, most of our measurements we get directly from the OEM CAD drawing. So we're not, we're not measuring cars to come up with the data. So we're providing you very, very accurate information. One thing I wanted to add, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Bob, I think, I think it's one of the things that is sometimes lost is select fixtures to let equipment is used by a lot of the OEs in the manufacturing process. Is that correct? Um, we, we do some work with OEs, but um, that's a different division of select basically. Um, I mean, we're, you know, we're a tight knit group, but I don't want to cross that path with, with uh, OEM that's giving you that's giving you building cars on what jigs. Yeah. Well, when you talk about having that CAD data, and you're not running measurements, measurement, you know, facilities all over the world trying to measure cars post production. You're pulling CAD data because that, because there's a really nice interworking relationship between Select and the OEs. Yeah, and and the OEs they realize that um, you know working off of, off of CAD drawings for the body shop is much more accurate than working off of measurements that were taken by somebody after car was built for many reasons. There's you know, there's tolerances, there's damage that happens after the car leaves the factory before it actually ends up at a measuring site. Um, there's a, a deviation of the actual measuring system. There's a deviation of the technician that's running the measuring system. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of points that, that can change the, the actual data before it actually gets to the technician in the body shop that's depending on using it. So we're gonna shoot this quick, uh, or look at this uh, quick video. As you can see, this this is on the Griffin bench being measured now. Um, the first part is the actual setup, and you can see all the cross members are still in place. Um, every everything is still on the frame machine. The car is sitting in silk clamps, and Dirk is just leveling off the measuring system right now. So the front support was just screwed down, so it touches to support the front of the rail. The leveling um, of the rail was done in the center and now he's just placing the probe into the startup position. He'll turn the actual measuring head on, wait about five seconds for the Bluetooth to connect with the computer. Now he rolls it back and forth once or twice to wake up the system and the head actually rolls back and forth and finds where it is on the rail. Then he can start measuring. So you'll notice that when he's measuring, the probe is on an angle. Um, it could be on any angle. It, it doesn't have to be straight. Some measuring systems you can only measure with the probe being straight in the air. Our sensors calculate the angle for the arm and for the probe. So we're able to access more points um, easier. Now he's put, gonna put a longer extension on to reach up inside uh, beyond some suspension points when he puts that arm on it the machine automatically knows it's coded so it automatically knows what extension was put on he never has to go back to the computer and even when he's measuring um, he, he doesn't have to look at the computer he can go off a of sound so when you get close to a measuring point it actually sounds off that hey this is the, this is the point here that we can measure 
Uh, you can measure any point in any order. You don't ever have to go back to the computer until you're actually done measuring. We could go to the next slide. Um, I think the next slide will have a little more information on the actual measurements. Okay, so we're showing it here uh, on the two post lift. And Kristen had brought up earlier the gazelle. So the gazelle is on the left side and basically that's a trolley that we can roll the, roll the rail and measuring head around the shop and measure from lift to lift. Um, very, very quick setup. You just roll it under a lift. You don't have to center it under the car. Uh, you just park it, turn it on and, and start measuring. So it's very productive, very productive uh, tool for blueprinting. You can blueprint the car in 10, 15 minutes and have a full report. Uh, once you get into the upper body measuring and things, obviously that's gonna take a little bit longer, but to blue, blueprint the job, it's very, very quick. So Select um, stepped up to the plate last week and because of the, uh, the situation, that we're in globally, uh, Select decided to provide free data. <clears throat> so anybody that buys a uh, measuring system will have free data. And anybody that has purchased a subscription over the, the last few months, just give us a call. What we'll do is we'll issue you a credit and you'll be able to apply that credit to, uh, to any other equipment or accessories that you want to purchase. Uh, this is this is the way that SLED is giving back to the industry as we're all facing these difficult times. Oh, the new measuring system, the Eagle. Uh, we've we've shown this for the last two SEMA shows. We've had very good, very good response. Uh, a lot of people are interested. This is a very very quick blueprinting tool. Um, Put the car in the lift, mount the, mount the Eagle laser head to a point. You tell the computer what point you mounted it at, and then you hang two targets and you start measuring. Um, it'll come with uh, two sets of two targets. The targets are slightly different now. We're, we're still changing those, which um, has delayed us a little bit, but we're getting ready here over the next week or two to roll out our uh, first couple of Eagles in the United States to our first, uh, our first shops so we can get good feedback and then we'll actually start uh, sending these out. We, we do have quite a few sold already, pre-sold, um, and we're gonna start filling those orders here very shortly. So anybody that's interested in Eagle, get in touch with us and uh, we'd be glad to get you set up and, and on the list for distribution. All the software for this product is, is based on our website. So when you sign on to the website, onto your account, you'll have the most recent measurements. So you won't have to download to, uh, to do any updates. It'll automatically be there. You'll be able to work off of any computer. Um, the, the system is in a carry case. It's very light, um, easy to move from stall to stall or shop to shop. As long as you just sign in with your uh, with your license agreement, you'll be able to measure cars at multiple locations. I know this is one of your favorite things, Kristen, is the Eagle. So uh, we're looking forward to getting one in your hands here shortly. Yeah. So I am um, I am super pumped about this and what it may add to blueprinting um, and how fast it is. I just wish that that. And, and I know France is gonna is either watching with us now or they're gonna rewatch it. I just wish they weren't such perfectionists because I'd love to already have it. So I do appreciate though that they keep constantly improving it and constantly improving and constantly improving. But man, I'm not ready to have it. So just I know there's some shops that are gonna get it before me and they've all pre-ordered and that's cool. But I'm, I'm excited. So yes, yeah, let's known for accuracy. So uh, I know. So yeah. I, I have yeah. A hard time, have a hard time giving that up uh, before before they're dead on so I, I so i respect it but i was i was working them hard at seam i was i was trying to get pierre to get me one i was I, I didn't get anywhere he said it's not ready it's not it's not where i want it and you can't have it and i was like all right i respect that 
I still want it. <laughs> We're close. We're close now. Okay, so we'll touch on uh, on some heavy duty stuff for for a couple minutes here. Uh, Silette has been in the heavy duty market for 30 plus years. Um, we're looking to establish um, the truck business in the United States. We've actually entered into some talks with some OEMs now. We're we're speaking with two OEMs now for uh, for truck repair, and the the truck repair is going into the same phase that the car repair went in two years ago. There's a lot of systems, computers, cameras, uh, adaptive driving, accident prevention, and things like that. So, um, so they're going to be looking for more accuracy now than ever before. Um, and we'll, we'll go through next slide here and it'll show you a couple different things that we've been doing in Europe for, for a long time with truck equipment. So on the top left is the original system, um, which we currently have, it's a BPL, uh, and that locks down to um, somewhat like a Corex system. It's uh, mounted tracks in the floor, and you're able to uh, push, pull, um, lift, you're able to push up and down, and um, you know, make all the different hydraulic adjustments to a truck chassis. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but on the on the top right is the new Mammoth uh, system, which is the upgraded now the the new BPL system, um, where we've made it very modular. Uh, there's a lot more movement to the towers for for adjustment. Um, then on the left middle picture, we've got what we call individual pulling towers, and this is just where the cab might have to be pulled around. The towers are are high so that you could reach the top of the cab. Um, but if you look at the, the bottom left, what we call the cab bench, that's an actual frame machine that is used to put jigs on a cab. And this has been going on for a long time with, uh, with certain OEM truck manufacturers in Europe, um, like Mercedes-Benz and Freightliner. Um, they've, they've been requiring that their cabs be fixed on jigs. Now the unique thing that we're doing in the U.S. with uh, with a couple of truck manufacturers now is we're using our 7E bench and also using the chameleon jigs. So we're using our universal jigging system to come up with repair solutions for these truck cabs, and they have to be very accurate um, hinge points and you know side sensors and things like that. We're able to put these cabs back into the right position with the universal jigs. So it's going to be a pretty exciting uh, time coming up soon for, for heavy duty trucks. We also on the, on the right side, the, the middle and the lower picture on the right is we also have truck wheel alignment systems and we have full frame measuring systems. So chassis measuring for these heavy duty trucks. This might be something that some of some of you car repairers want to, want to take a look at. Like I said, the cars, uh, the, the cars are going to drive the technology that the trucks are using for repairs. When these heavy duty truck repairs uh, don't have uh, guidelines from the OEMs of these truck manufacturers, they're referring back to the car procedures that they're doing now. So a lot of riveting, a lot of gluing, um, a lot of same technology that we're using now on the American and high-end uh, German type cars. I know you said that you've got some heavy duty people tuning into your webinars now, correct? Is that correct, Kristen? Yeah, so we've had some of the guys from the uh, heavy duty truck, is it a heavy duty truck association? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong or do it wrong or that would be nothing new. Bob's just going, uh-huh, yep, that's true. So, <laughs> but yeah, the heavy duty truck association and the guys that have been putting together their own um, trade shows and doing their own kind of version. So they've been watching and tuning in. Um, 3M sent them all some great invites. And um, so, yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure we covered this because uh, I think when people think of Solette, they think of one high-end European vehicles and they forget that you guys do this stuff too. And you do Hondas and Toyotas and Chevys and everything else. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're hitting all the markets now. Um, 
you know, the, the Asian uh, car manufacturers, uh, U.S. car manufacturers, and obviously still the Europeans, and as like you said, as well as the heavy-duty stuff now. What's up next? What's the next slide, Kristen? Oh, uh, financing. So if you need any financing, we, we've been working closely with Trinity Financial. Um, pretty painless. They do over the phone apps and a lot of times approvals in the same day. We do have a couple promotional deals that we're running now on Chameleon XL, XL benches with Chameleon and uh, cross members, MZ towers, things like that, as well as 70 benches. And then, uh, and then the Chameleon, the Chameleon has been approved by uh, quite a few OEMs over the last few months. Uh, GM, Ford, Honda, Toyota, Mitsubishi, and that big one now, Porsche just came on board with us. And uh, this week we actually, we entered into agreement with two new car companies. Um, can't tell you who they are yet, but but they'll be making their announcements here pretty soon. So the Chameleon's getting, getting a lot of attention and we're running a finance special on that right now. I think we think we covered everything. Uh, next slide, I think, is is the end. <clears throat> so we'll we'll send out a uh, an email packet to everybody that's been registered today, and we'll also include those uh, those low lease payment deals that we're running. Uh, if there's if there's something that you don't see on there that you're interested in, please let us know. Um, info at select.com is an easy one to remember, or you can email me directly. And uh, please go to our website, select.com, and check things out. Hey, Bob, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. I'm gonna come back to video here real quick. Sure. Um, I, I so I'm running around and moving stuff as we were talking. Did we hit select? I know we had a really or select. <laughs> Did we hit chameleon? I know we had a, a you know pretty long video of them building the jigs. Did? Yeah, actually, we should take a look at um, a closer look at chameleon because I think we might have missed a slide. Yeah, let me uh, let me check the PowerPoint and go back real quick and see what I got going on. Actually, maybe through some of the changes that I made, maybe we uh, maybe we skipped over that one. It just never hurts to give it a good look. I never should have let you make changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow Chameleon fell out of the deck. Um. All right. Do you want me to go to an older deck, or you just want to talk about Chameleon? Yeah, we could go to the last deck, maybe, and just okay. pull up those couple slides. All right. I made you guys a folder. Now I got to go find your folder. <laughs> I was, this is what happens when I try to get organized. In my unorganized mind, I know where everything is. Um, well, I think I might have unorganized you a little bit. <laughs> no. All right, so uh, do do do. I got it right here. If I, it makes you, do you do this too, where you like you tell yourself do do do, and it makes it it makes things better. I don't know if it's like the baby shark thing or. If, no, uh, but I'm gonna try it. Yeah, you can't think of something and suddenly you just like play a little tune and suddenly it's all all is right with the world. There we go. There's chameleon. Can we see it? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. I, I and the reason I want to make sure we don't we don't forget this is it it is kind of a, it's a game changer because I think one of the other oh, so I'm gonna put my insurance hat on and I can see Blaze and and Andrew and all the others about to hit me. Um, in the past, you know, you were conditioned to think that you know if I had a shop that had Celeste, I was paying 10, 12 hours, um, and I was paying rentals for fixtures and shipping and all that stuff, and so you tend to think that it's a little overwhelming right that man the system's just going to be overwhelming and then chameleon comes along and and i'm not renting fixtures and i'm not shipping fixtures and i'm not having to have a forklift unload them and drag them in and do all these things but i still get all of the benefits that i was getting with those rental fixture kits um with this system so um it's been it's been amazing so i'm i'm gonna make sure we talk about it but i'm gonna let you take the slides because you, you're the expert yeah those are all good points Kristen, and um that, that was, you know, a struggle sometimes with, the sh like you said, with the shipping and 
and the weight and the, you know unloading the truck and the forklift and things like that and uh, the chameleon has has put us beyond those issues um, the chameleon premium which is what we're selling in the u.s gives us 16 jig points uh, six uh six angle points so we can do strut towers angled suspension points um and the frame rails things like that and then full jigs on, underneath the car on the horizontal points um, and we we duplicate the dedicated jig so we're working off the same data and if you build up a chameleon jig and you put it next to a dedicated jig you'll see you're duplicating the exact same measurements um, same holding. Um, so with with jigs, you know, it, number one, it's a measuring system. You put it you put it on the bench. You put the car on it. If the car doesn't line up to the jigs, then there's damage there. The unique thing with Chameleon is it has a measuring system built into the software. So whatever jigs don't fit the car, you just take the numbers off the slide plate on the bottom, and maybe Kristen can show us a close up of the slide plate, but we we enter that data into the software and you know it, it pumps out a damage report at the end of the at the end of the measurement so we can we can enter the data for any points that don't line up to the vehicle and it gives us a damage report without measuring the car with uh, with a 3d electronic system so um then we cut off whatever parts or we pull whatever damage until the jigs line up and the pin goes in and we know that we we're back to zero tolerance just like we were with dedicated jigs. So super quick, a um, little bit more setup initially to, to get the car on the bench, but um, extremely um, friendly to use the software. Uh, you're able to actually turn the jig on the on the software itself so if there's a plastic shield in the way and you don't want to remove that shield you can just spin the jig so it's on a different angle um, the blue tower is hitting something you put on a, a shorter blue tower and it tells you you know raise up the mz piston two holes and um, it's very very intuitive very 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 simple to use we can we can move the car back and forth on the frame machine. So there's, there's a lot of adjustments that could be done. And the nice thing is it uses all your existing equipment that you have in the shop. So we utilize all the equipment that you've purchased from Sled over the years. And we just, we add the chameleon to replace the dedicated J. I think we've got a video. Um, yeah, there's a good video, but this fixture system works for just about, I mean, it does work on everything, right? So from my, from my, Sabines to my Griffins to my Roan to whatever I can put us on anything we got. Yeah, and 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 say that you just want to put a car up on your frame machine and and use the um, use the the three D measuring system to do a pull on it, um, and the car is moving around on you because it, it has weak rockers. Without even using any data, you can just build up a couple jigs to to build some extra holding points. So it's very you know very universal. Yep. Yeah, I think there's a video next that should show kind of the process back on that Toyota of building those fixtures. Yep. So there we go. So you see here, we've, we've got the blue MZ towers, which that's equipment we've been using for years. To the right, we've got the MZ pistons, which are those chrome tubes. And then in front of all that stuff is, is the UP plates, the red plates and the jig tops, which are those silver chrome pieces in the front. So everything works the same as it has in the past. It's just we're using software now instead of paper setup sheets. Um, you're able to zoom in, um, you know, because it's on the computer. <clears throat> it, like I said, you can spin it, you can change the height adapters. It's just very, very friendly software. And Everything's based online again. Everything is in the cloud, so you're working with the newest data. Um, there's no updates to do. As soon as you sign on, you have the most current information available. So in real time, he just built that one jig for for that car. 
And you can see everything has a home in those drawers. Everything has a phone cut area to go back into. So everything is labeled. It's very, um, very friendly system. So what I like is that that system is telling me, I mean, literally I've had, I've had my kids building jigs off the software. So just you match those numbers, you know, different, your different pipes, your different plates. Um, and it's, it's, my kids think it's like building Legos. So they think it's the coolest thing when I tell them that we're going to build up a car. Um, but it yeah. is super simple to use. You're not, you know, going to a wall of, of attachments and trying to go, okay, how do I do this and how do I build it? And, um, and it, it doesn't take very long to get somebody up and building and making these. Yeah, actually, when we delivered it to your shop and I came in to do the initial setup with you, we worked with your son, Evan, yeah. and he was, he was building jigs on one side and you were building jigs on the other. He, he still thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Literally, he believes it's a real life, um, it's a real life Lego set that he gets to play with, so. <laughs> That gives you a pretty good idea of. Um, yeah. uh, of I'm going to ask Kelly to fast forward a little bit and show how these jigs start to set on the car. I think that's. Okay. That's fast forwarding too much. That's the end. There we go. All right. Go back, go back some more. Okay. So, just like we watched earlier with the, the mobile bench and the dedicated, they're just prepping the bench now to drop the drop the car down on a few of these jigs to start the measuring process. And we could see that's the Griffin lift working now in the center of the machine. You could see the, the guys are sliding the car forward and left and right to line it up. And then they're going to go ahead and drop those bolts down into the jig heads. And then they'll fold up that lift and, and put it away because at that point, they're done with that center lift. I'm just tighten it down and we're ready to go. Awesome. Okay. And these, these, these chameleon jigs can be pulled against just like the de dedicated jigs. You're anchoring the vehicle down to the car or down to the frame machine rather. So the, the car is becoming part of the bench. Yeah, and we're exactly. going after the strongest parts of the car, just like we do it to dedicate us. We're bolting into the suspension points. It, it literally is the old, it's the, it's the traditional fixture system, just in a, in a way that we can make it work for anything instead of having to order and have that shipped and shipped back and do all that. I can do any car anytime on demand because the chameleon system's in here. I don't have to, um, I know we've had some, you know, some people call me and go, Hey, I've been waiting on, you know, a fixture kit for, for a while for this jag or whatever um but it doesn't matter i can work on a car same day if i had to by having chameleon in here yeah and you know in the past sometimes we would get backed up on those dedicated stuff it just seems like that same car gets hit in in every corner of the usa at the same time and you know some of those jig sets we have eight ten sets of across the nation and sometimes they're all they're all out at the same time so the chameleon does eliminate that issue as well of waiting for jigs. All right. Well, uh, we got it in. We, you know, I, I know now not to let you mess with the presentation day before. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Jason, where I'm standing, I can't see the chat room. Is there any questions or anything in there that we need to get answered? No, we don't have any. Uh, no, nobody raising their hand. No questions. No. Uh, I got no there. questions from Blaze or Andrew or any of those guys. I figured they were going to eat my lunch being in the shop today. So, oh, wait, Kaysen's unmuting. Is that? No, okay. So, <laughs> uh, so if you have any questions, type them in. If you want to unmute yourself and ask, you've got a chance. Uh, so Andrew just raised his hand. Holly, can you unmute Andrew there? Andrew, if you want to unmute yourself, I guess, with a hand raise. And there you go. Hey, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. Uh, yeah, so usually when we use the lid, we when we do a truck truck it's only for the germany for the european cars so he was saying that now they have become certified for uh mostly the japanese cars gm so can we start charging now for structural damages for all these cars or like negotiated with the insurances then 
So I'll take, Bob, I'll take the, I always get the, what can we charge questions? Those go to me. Jason's even like, Kristen, you wanna take that one? So, <laughs> um, so Select does have the data for them. So it, the data is there, you can, you can set those cars up, you can measure them. Um, we've got Toyotas, Hondas, we've done just about everything in here. So, so can you get access to the data? Absolutely. So you could set up, you could measure those cars. You could do it either, you know, with your Naja if you had it, or do it by building the fixtures out and using that as a measuring system, like you mentioned. So if it needed to be done, yes, you can do it. And then of course, in my opinion, anything I do in the shop, I charge for. So yes, I would definitely build that out. Hey, we, we do have another question here, uh, Bob. Uh, will the Naja be able to be used with other frame equipment? Yes, uh, you can use it with pretty much any frame equipment. Um, for some, for some of the more popular benches and frame racks, we do have adapters. Um, pretty, pretty simple. A lot of them you can just use our our brackets that we would use on the 7E bench. Will uh, will somehow attach to the, your current bench. A lot of guys have just taken magnets that have a bolt stud on it, and they'll just attach it to our bracket, and then magnetically attach it to their bench. So, pretty simple as long as you're supporting the uh, the two the two support points that we have, one being in the middle of the rail and one being on the end. It's usually pretty simple. Pretty simple setup. No other questions coming in, Kristen. Oh, there's Blaze. I knew he wasn't going to let me get through. Uh, yeah, I got to ask one question. So uh, I'm hey, curious with the uh, like expanding support for um, domestic or um, you know Asian manufacturers with the Chameleon. I know you guys have talked a little bit about um, the Chameleon branching into upper body stuff. Um, you know where you're being able to fixture hinge mounts or like on a quarter like a striker location or something like that is that um also going to be happening with the you know all of the brands that that are going to be taking that on um yes yes and no so um eventually it will be everything so in the beginning um which is is right now the the, the side sets are actually being tooled so we're, we're probably, I don't know, I'll say maybe two months out from actually receiving those. But um, anything that, that we have CAD drawings on is, is very quick and easy to do those, to do those uh, data points for. Okay. Um, I'm curious, cause like when you, when you get into things like, you know, um, any kind of FCA or Chrysler product where there's a lot of weld bonding, you know, it can be really a time crunch where you have to get that panel on the car in exactly the right spot, you know, like really quickly because you have a really large area to work and weld bond. Um, so that's something that I'm very interested to see is, you know, be, being able to do a true fixture um, to install something like, you know, if you have a B pillar going in on a Chrysler vehicle um, or even a quarter panel for that matter, being able to kind of, you know, hit, hit that striker location and, and have that help you get it in the right location quickly so that you have more time to do the other things that you need to do. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Especially with summer coming, right? The, the, he's just kicking off quicker and quicker. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Cause we were Philadelphia suburbs. So I get days where I'm in mean, our shops air conditioned, but I still get days where it's 90 degrees and 90% humidity. And it's like, yeah, your work time is like half of what it says on the package. Right. Yep. And, and like we talked about with the chameleon versus the dedicated, uh, it's the same for the side jigs. Now, in, in the past, when we just strictly had dedicated jigs, there was, you know, select manufacturers that we, we built the, the side jigs for. But with the chameleon being universal, uh, it'll give us, give us a lot more car lines and models that we'll be able to have those side measurements for. How are we doing, Jason? Uh, we got one more question that just came in uh, asking about uh, if the chameleon is going to be completely replacing dedicated fixtures or will there be a need for them in some instances? So it's right now it's, it's up to the car manufacturer um, if they, they want to keep doing dedicated jigs. I can tell you that most 
OEMs are looking at Chameleon for the solution of what we talked about, ship time, um, you know, rental delays, shipping costs, rental costs, things like that. Those are all pain points for the OEMs to, um, to, to keep the repair costs down on their vehicles. So <clears throat> eventually it, most jigs will probably be replaced um, most dedicated jigs will probably be replaced by Chameleon. Um, I'm sure there's going to be certain OEMs that say, nope, you know, we want dedicated jigs. Um, and, you know, we have to, you know, we have to leave that up to the OEM, but we also have to look at it from our standpoint of how long it takes to create a set of dedicated jigs and how many of those dedicated jigs get sold. Um, because the R and D is huge to build dedicated jigs. And that's the reason why dedicated jigs weren't available for every car in the market. Just because of the R and D and, you know, how many changes happen, uh, through the car's life cycle. Every time there's a change, we have to come up with a comp set that fits that, um, that dedicated jig or come up with an entirely new set of jigs. So you'll see Chameleon will take over a lot of the dedicated jig arena. I don't think, I, I don't think we're gonna have anybody real. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I should ask Larry first, but, but it's, that's going to be exciting because there is a lot of value to be able to get on a car same day. If you want, if you're doing your repair planning and trying to decide when it's going to go into cycle and all those things, this is no longer a logistics concern. So that was when we were repair planning those cars and we're looking at, you know, parts order to intake to repair the logistics of dedicated fixtures was something you had to think about. So it's kind of removing that barrier. And are you Porsche just um, certified chameleon? So that's correct for for the 911. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. For the the new 992, that's that's ah. the um, we, we don't make dedicated jigs for that car anymore. It's, it, they'll all be on Chameleon now. Awesome. Cars I don't get to work on, but Larry does. Not a lot of, there's not a lot of Porsches running around Arkansas. <laughs> so. I, I have one follow-up question with the um, dedicated jigs, actually. Um, so I remember a while ago, I sent Kristen the video doing the um, Volkswagen shock tower which is one of my favorite examples of like what I really like about Silette where, where you get them blank and you have to drill the holes in them. And it's like, it makes it super easy. And without it, it would just be an insane nightmare. Um, so I'm curious uh, if there, if you can comment a little bit, if there's any thought process behind, you know, when you have something like that, that you want to do, obviously that plate has to be dedicated in order to really be able to do that job. But is there any potential down the road where, you know, maybe that plate um, is the only thing that you would need to get um, or rent or purchase and you'd be able to use that plate along with your chameleon to build everything up to the point that the plate attaches? Yeah, I think you hit it on the head, Blaze. Um, and that, that's something, you know, if uh, Volkswagen or Audi, um, pursues the chameleon that that's something that our engineers will work on directly with their engineers to come up with the the right process because that's that's how that whole system was developed that you're talking about now where you get a strut tower it has no holes in it um for the for the strut and you actually have to cut that hole in the tower after you place that part in the car so um, so that the strut tower is at zero tolerance where it should be. So we'll do the same thing with the OEMs um, and work with them, you know, to come up with the, the right scenario. So it might be one piece that's, uh, you know, maybe there'll be a small kit for Audi that has three or four pieces in it to, to meet all of their needs, or maybe it'll be a kit that's rentable or, um, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and come up with um, how that OEM wants to actually handle that situation. Um, 
I got the chat. I can see the chat. I can see that. So perfection's got a question that I'll take it with the differences or the, and the benefits versus nausea versus matrix one, which we have that in our blueprinting bay as well. So um, keep in mind when we talk about measuring um, a structural measuring system and my blueprinting measuring system can be two separate things, which in those cases, the nausea and the matrix one are kind of not in the same arena. Um, the the eagle in the matrix one may become something that's that's very similar in roles or capacities or whatever, but the two different things. So so nausea I can't take to the parking lot. Matrix one I can take to the parking lot. Um, nausea is OE spec data. Um, my matrix one is comparative data or comparative measurement data, comparative photo data, etc. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think of what would how to look at this way. Um, matrix one is evergreen because it is a photo so the car can be gone two years later and I can still take measurements if I want to by drawing points and doing some things so that's interesting for me for court um, but um, I can't and I, and I know right now I still really have not incorporated the wand into structural repair so at some point when it gets to your bench you're going to need a um, dedicated 3d measuring system that's going to be able to do that so those are different in that way can you use nausea and blueprint absolutely um, you can put the gazelle tower, you can have two post lift, you can go up and down. I got to have the two post lift for the wand as well. Um, just a matter then of preference speed and who you're going to, who you're going to train. We like, so we have tested them. We've trained um, adjuster backgrounds with no technician background whatsoever. And we can get people trained relatively within a day. So learning curve, small on both of those tools. So um, then it just comes to sit down. And for you as a shop and decide, how do I want to use this tool every day? Is it going to be in a dedicated spot or will this tool do multiple things around the shop? Am I going to drag it um, to the frame rack, to the technician stall, to the blueprint? And then as you start to look at that, to maximize your budget, then make the decision on the tool that best fits that budget um, to get, I, I hate to buy tools to buy tools. So I'm always like, how are you going to use it? <laughs> Where is it going to stay? Who's going to use it? And then let's make a decision that way. I don't know. Does it perfection? And um, does that help? We can also go offline. You can give me a call and I'll go through agnosium side by side if it helps. Jason's like, don't call her. It's a long call. It's a <laughs> don't do it. Don't. <laughs> It'll be all good. Uh, awesome. Anything else in there? That's it. All right. Man, Bob, that's covering a lot. Oh, wait. Whoop, whoop, so, uh, there, uh, Bob, did you talk about how the nausea can be used for upper body? Do you want me to get the upper body bar? Sure, it'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we do have a couple attachments that allow the, uh, allow the probe to come up over top of the um, fender bolts. Yeah. I don't, Holly, pan that over there real quick and we can. Can you paint? Pan. Allows us to do um, door hinge points, strikers. Uh, you could add, you can add any measuring point that you like. Um, Kristen's trying to show that. Yeah. <clears throat> that arm, but it's it's a good size arm that takes you up over top of the um, the, the the fender bolt. You can measure fender bolts, strut towers from the top, um, rad supports, door hinge points. Um, like I said, you can you can add any measuring point that you want on the bottom of the car or the side of the car. Yeah, uh, I, all of this is carbon fiber. Um, wait, I walked out of camera. Sorry. All of this is carbon fiber and just doesn't hardly weigh anything. So I'm always uh, like like super careful. As you can see, me swinging it. Go no, Christian, you're not careful at all. But but super lightweight material. The nice thing with carbon fiber is is like Christian said, it's light. Um, but it also, it, it doesn't bend. So, um, so if it's, you know, if it's bent, it's broken. Um, so we, we know it's, it's always accurate. Bam. And you can go, I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, Bob, but I'm going to ask you, you know, I, when I start measuring with an Aja, I don't have to go back to the computer, like you said, and I can do points in any order that I want to. Can I go lower to upper without going back to the computer or would I, would I need to, go back to the computer before I went to upper? If you're measuring um, points that, that are established points, you, you can just you can just go through Keep going. It. Yeah, if you want to add points, then we do have to make a click on the screen. 
to um, to go to the add point feature. <clears throat> so I can just simply slide slide if I'm sliding the nausea head out and then attach my my attachment or whatever and then go immediately to those points so I can upper and lower measure in one swoop. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You can go from the bottom of the car up to the strut tower, fender bolt, door hinge points. Um, you know, like I said, anything that's already in the measuring system. If you want to add a point, then we just we go over and we it's just a simple click to add a point. And um, and then you know when we go back to the computer, we can do many things. We can we can look at those points down to the tenth of the millimeter. We can use the pointer, the the mouse cursor, and we can draw lines on the screen and and use the electronic tram gauge right on the screen to do any measurements to to see length and length, width, and height of each point. So it's 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 very intuitive system, um, pretty easy software to get through as well. So once I've ma I, once I've digitally mapped those points, so to speak, then I can start taking measurements between that. I'm not just solely stuck with the measurements of where I've connected my sensor. Right. Yeah. So you don't have to rely on just the numbers of uh, of your length, height, and width. You can, like I said, you could actually measure electronically from one point to the other point just by dragging the cursor and and drawing lines. Wow. Fritz, are you still there? Did I miss that in training? Did I did I like step out during that session? Because that's cool. And I, I I haven't done that yet. Before you the tabs, no, you haven't done that yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. I did an install at a, at a shop and we were measuring the car and uh, me, the mechanic said, hey, I, I know that this car has damage on this um, lower control arm on the left rear, but the insurance company won't let me replace it till the car goes on the front end alignment, you know, on the four wheel alignment system. So what we did was we actually measured each control arm. We measured the, the the right one that was good, and we measured the left one that he said had damage on. And all we did was pick two two pilot holes that were in the control arm, and we we measured up that there was a few millimeters difference. So we were actually able to print that report out, send it over to the adjuster, and he was able to get authorization to go ahead and change that while it was on the lift before he actually sent it to alignment. So the, there's a lot of ways that you can use the measuring system. Um, you know, you could you could have a cradle sitting on a on a on a workhorse, and you can measure four points on that cradle. And use the electronic tram gauge to exit out and see if there's any deviation. There's a lot of different things we could do with the with the nausea. Well, we did we did title it innovation and collision repair. So, check. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, we got any more questions there? That looks like it. I survived yeah. a day. I survived a day in the shop so far and haven't really had to work too hard. So, hey, can I make it. you work work for just one more yeah, minute? And, absolutely. Uh, you could pop up the Vega Max slide because I realized we did miss that one too. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Just just to take a quick look at that and and yeah. show another option for right. framing. Go d go down. Thanks, Bob. I was just gonna slide mention 15. that. Yeah, slide fifteen. Boom. Greg's on it. <laughs> Well, he had a day off yesterday, so his brain's refreshed. So, <clears throat> on the calendar he was off, but physically he was working. Yeah. That's right. There we go. So um, this is a little different than most of our other equipment. Uh, it's not a jig bench. It's it's a flat rack, as you can see. Um, but it is another option for for our customers if they want a quick drive on full frame flat rack. Uh, the way that the sill clamps are set up is that they can they can adjust for a full box frame, or they could be screwed all the way down for pinch welds. Uh, comes with a bunch of accessories, two 10, two 10 ton uh, pull rams, uh, 360, has a hoist on one of them so you can lift engines and things like that out. And it comes with a full rack of, of pull accessories, some clamps, um, dead car 
dollies if the car suspension is ripped out and uh, wheels are flat or broken axle stands so it's it's got quite a bit of um, offering for it we have it in two different lengths we have it in 17 foot and we have it in 21 foot and Kristen just rolled over the tool cart I don't know if we can get a close-up of that but you can see it's got quite a bit of accessories that come with it and also um, airbag jack is included with it as well uh, I don't know if we can get that little camera on it it may not I gotta focus it it's Yeah. All right, we'll just go back to the wide, Holly. So, yeah. And yeah, the carts, the carts are nice. There's a you know, couple of carts for um, wheels around nicely. And one thing with Celette is we keep, keep everything mobile, so it's it's easy to get to get to the job and it's easy to store after you're done. Yeah, I, sometimes I go into shops and I watch them and I know that for, for an equipment distributor, you don't mind when someone overbuys. Um, but, but I think when we look at, at some of the, what our workflow touch times and the way that we're using structural, I, I sometimes think a lot of shops overbuy because some of the stuff could be mobile and um, you can move it around the shop to the technician versus always thinking that technician's got to have their own individual set of everything. Right. Yeah, everything Same. we do is modular. Yeah. Is that? So, you know, you, you uh, have I, two, three pushes, and you only have one puller, so it's, everything's module. Perfect. All right. Well, Greg, are we missing anything else? <laughs> uh, awesome. I think, we're I think we're good to go. All right. So we've got a um, um, we've got a package. Right, Bob? I think you had a slide that we're going to have a package we're going to send out so everybody can have some information. Yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll get you the package sent over and if you can distribute it or however you want to do it. We'll... Yep, yep, we'll take, we will take care of that. So, like I said, I, when we started it, I was terrified of Select for so many years and some of that was from, um, it's not the system I grew up on, so I had a comfort factor with something else, but then working in claims, you learned to think that the Select was a very difficult system and hard to do and took lots of hours because of it's basically larry sending me those big estimates those back in those days but so you, there was this uh, i don't like to say angst but now that the system's in um and with the griffin and being able to drive on it's just um very very easy to use very lightweight on the decks very um not a, a huge undertaking for me to get one on the rack and get it set up i love that everything's stored there um, i'm not having to go and pull stuff off the walls and carrying it over as soon as I take those grates off it's there. So yeah, I think you guys thought of everything in ergonomics and safety and, and putting things where you need it. So it's just in time for the technician when they want it. Yeah. And we're going to show more of that, um, you know, in our upcoming video series that we, that we start to shoot with you on, <laughs> on all the equipment in place. I'm going to be excited to make that, that whole SOP and training series. I know the OEMs are excited to get it as well, um, but uh, it's just going to up the game. So, you know, as soon as we can get travel back and you can get back over here, that'll be, um, and then we'll make Jason come down from Wisconsin. So my golf weather's better down here. I'm just saying, Jason. No doubt about that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, if you have any questions that we didn't cover today on a specific piece of equipment or uses or data or anything that you want to know, um, you can reach out to Bob. He'd be happy to talk to you. You can reach out to us. If we can't answer it, we'll get you in touch with Bob. Um, but anything that you want to know, please, um, please take a look and, and ask us some questions because um, it, it's made a big difference here. So you're going to see some really cool stuff coming up pretty soon on how we're using this. Very exciting. That's it. All right. Let's have a fantastic day. And Bob, we'll see you soon when you can get out of Texas and back over here. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you.